Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God, Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers. The flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and is recompensed before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. God. Together we will read uh, Psalm 85. Uh, responsibly by full verse. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have 
I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. A reading from the second letter of Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all of these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will be met with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Please be seated. Today, our Advent journey continues in our quiet yet prophetic act of lighting yet one more candle on the Advent wreath during the darkest time of the year. It's part of our Advent ritual, part of our preparation, part of our anticipation as we await the birth of something new into the world. And every year at this time, into our quiet ritual of candle lighting and waiting, comes a force, a reckoning. In a bull in a china cabinet kind of way, John the Baptist storms in, making no apologies for his entry and proclaiming to everyone within earshot a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John is a little rough around the edges, clothed in camel's hair and eating locust and wild honey. He's one born to Elizabeth and to Zechariah in their old age. And he is the one, the forerunner of Jesus. And he's the one who, according to the prophet Isaiah, is the voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And maybe, in order for us to be ready to hear and to see, maybe we need a proclamation by a strange and rough around the edges prophet to shake us up a bit so we can recognize the new thing that God is doing. In last Sunday's Advent series, we talked about John's role of preparing people to receive the Messiah. And Raven Agape made the comment that if it were not for John preaching out in the wilderness and calling for a baptism of repentance, that it might be those who encountered Jesus would not have been prepared for him. Which really got me to thinking. What does it mean to prepare ourselves for the one who is to come? What would it mean to prepare ourselves or make ourselves ready? And what would it look like to put things in order so that we might be open enough or empty enough to receive the one who longs to be born in us? That's part of what we're doing in this Advent season. In the days leading up to the Feast of Christmas, we are preparing ourselves through the rituals and through the scripture readings and through the quiet of these services so we might be ready for the birth of something new. And I really do think it takes some preparation on our parts because the God who came and the God who still comes in the form of Jesus is really a lot different than maybe the God we expect. I don't know about you, but the God I often pray for to come is a God who will make all things right. A God who will come with such power that injustices will just cease and suffering will stop. That's the God that I long for, and I pray to come. And I don't think I'm alone in those hopes and prayers, and there were many during Jesus' day that were looking for a Messiah to come and make all things new, but they were expecting that Messiah to make all things new in maybe a very different way like maybe amassing an army to overthrow the Roman regime. Many were on the lookout for a particular way that a Messiah might act in the world with great power and great might. But instead, the Messiah who came was cloaked in a very different kind of power and wrapped 
in nothing but swaddling clothes and love and lying in a manger. A limitless God decides to come to us with limits. One womb, one backwater village, one bygone era, one brief life, and one agonizing death. Many were not expecting that. Such fragility and such vulnerability. And some didn't even recognize the new way that God was being born into the world. The salvation we long for or the salvation we might pray for might not be the salvation that God brings. The salvation God brings often comes in very surprising and unexpected ways that we may have never been able to imagine. So how do we prepare ourselves for that? How do we prepare to be surprised? How do we prepare ourselves for the unexpected? How do we get ourselves ready to receive God as God is and not how we might expect God to be? I wonder if part of our preparation might involve letting go. If we're to be open to the new ways that God is being born within us and within our world, we might need to spend some time releasing our expectations of how God is supposed to show up. Perhaps part of our preparations this Advent is the work of letting go of our thoughts and our hopes of exactly how God should be born in the world. So with that in mind, I again invite you into some silence, just one minute, not to worry. And during this next minute, I invite you to reflect on your own life and discern within yourselves what beliefs or expectations you're holding on to that might prevent you from seeing the new way that God is longing to be born. I invite you to consider what you might need to let go of in order to be ready for God's new birth. We'll just take a moment. Please stand, if you are able, as we continue our service with the Nicene Creed as written by our spiritual ancestors. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. If you are joining us on Zoom, please put your prayers in the chat box. Holy God, we are so bad at creating peace. Come among us with your saving grace and healing presence. Come, Emmanuel, come. God, in your mercy. God of life and love, we plead for healing. Of the warring against others we harbor in our hearts, of our beloved planet. Show us what to do, God, in your mercy. We pray for the church. We pray especially for our siblings in the 301 Faith Partnership, for all saints in the Mountain Mission in Crested Butte, Church of the Holy Comforter in Bloomfield, the Sudanese Community Church in Denver, and our diocesan deputation to the General Convention. We pray also for the Church of Pakistan, united. May we all await with humble longing the coming of Christ. God, in your mercy. Grant that we may offer the help they truly need to all those whom we accompany through life's difficulties. We pray for the unhoused, for the food insecure, for migrants and immigrants, and for the people of Haiti. God, in your mercy. Be with those who have died. May they dwell with you in the per perfect love of your heavenly realm. May we also come into your presence at the hour of our death. God, in your mercy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For the faculty, students, staff, and families at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, for all victims of gun violence. For healing, for Sasha, Rosemary, Carol, John, Patsy, Mary Jo, and Jackie. Ruth, Stella, CC, Barb. For the Reverend Emily Barr Richards as she nears death. Continued healing for Bruce, healing for Kelly, Pamela, Peter, Terry. Special intentions. We pray for Pastor Rick in his surgery this week. We pray that healing may take place as a result. Special intentions for Monica and the twins, Andrew for guidance, for Kathy, rest in peace, Janet, Nick, and John.
Most merciful God, accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance and in our limited understanding, but out of your knowledge and boundless love for us, through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everybody. Peace. Good to see you. Candy and Mike, good to see you. And Carol and Beth and Paul, Dawn, Carolyn, Mary Alice, Terry. Good to see you all. And you are up on the screen, so give peace to the congregation. I don't know why that keeps happening, Carol, but <laughs> it happened to somebody else, too. <laughs> it's lovely. All right. Do you, um, do you, any of you have a special prayer today? No special prayers? And invite anyone who would like to come forward for prayers, for anniversaries, or birthdays, or travel, or for any reason. Or if there's anyone at home who would like special prayers. Well, all are welcome at this table because this is the table not of the church, but of the Lord God. And it is made ready for those who love God and those who want to love God more. So come, those of you who have much faith or those of you who have little those of you who have been here often, or those of you who have not been here at all, those of you who have tried to follow, and those of you who have failed, come, because it is God who invites you and who longs to meet you here. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You look with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and again he gave thanks to you, and gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and of wine, and ourselves as living sacrifices. Pour out your Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your Spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ, given for the world you have made. And in the fullness of time, bring us with St. Paul and John the Baptist and all of your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. And now we pray in the words that our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. In blood of Christ, behold who you are, become what you receive. Amen.
please join me in the post-communion prayer as printed in your bulletin. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And now may the blessing of the God of Abraham and Sarah and of Jesus Christ, born of our sister Mary, and of the Holy Spirit, who broods over the world as a mother over her children, be upon you this day and remain with you always. Go in peace in the light of God and God's love to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.